and welcome to FPL Mate, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2022-23 season. My name is Dan and today we are doing my, I guess, weekly team update to show you kind of what I'm up to with my team, where I'm thinking, where my brain is at in terms of my team. Um, sorry if these videos are, I guess, a little bit repetitive. I don't know if they're fully repetitive, but I just like to keep you guys in the loop of uh, what I'm thinking for my team. Uh, guys, if you do enjoy this video, please do leave a like. It really, really does help out so much. And uh, if you haven't subscribed already, I know 50% of you watching this video right now have not subscribed. What, what are you waiting for? Get subscribed. Like, you want to win FPL, right? Like, if you want to win at FPL, like, surely this is this is just a place to be, maybe. I don't know. We'll see, I guess. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, without further ado, let's have a look at my current draft. Right, today we are using 99.5 uh, of our team value. We've got 0.5 in the bank. There's no real reason for that other than I felt like with this team, I didn't actually need to spend all my money. And I don't mind keeping a little bit of money in the bank for a bit of flexibility later on down the line. So yeah, I, I think this is a good team without having to spend all, all the budget. So yeah, I, I guess we'll see if you guys agree or not. Um, let's start off in goal with Rhea. He is uh, still in the team. So he is one of the, the players who has sticked around. There are a, a fair few changes, but Rhea has stayed in the team. Uh, he is the, obviously a 4.5 million goalkeeper. And I do think he is the best of the 4.5 million goalkeepers. The only minor thing that puts me off him is the fact that Strakowska has obviously signed from Lazio to Brentford kind of as a backup, but he's kind of a good goalkeeper as well. So is, is Rhea going to get rotated? Is Rhea going to get sold? I don't know, potentially. But while he's at the club, he is like one of the best goalkeepers in the league. His stats last season suggested that whenever he was playing, Brentford kept more clean sheets, which is just, you know, just says everything. Made a lot of saves as well. Had a really good high save percentage. So, yeah, just a really good goalkeeper. And I think he genuinely can challenge some of the more expensive goalkeepers in terms of FPL points. Just because he'll be making more saves, he'll be probably getting some bonus points as well. And particularly after Leicester and Manchester United fixtures, his fixtures are really good as well. So if you can get past those two with, I don't know, three or four pointers, I'll be pretty happy. And then after that, we'll get the clean sheets, I think. We'll, we'll secure the bag. Uh, into defence, we've got Trent alexander -Arn Arnold, obviously, he's not going anywhere. He never has. He has been a mainstay. In, mainstay? In, mainstay? He's not been a stain on my team. He's been an absolute joy to have in my team. Um, the only player I owned for 38 game weeks last season, and I will probably do the same this season. 38 more game weeks of Trent Alexander-Arnold. Who says no? Not me. Uh, so we're, he's actually, he's going nowhere. Uh, we've got Robertson next. Uh, yeah, I, I'm back on Robertson. I keep switching between Luis Diaz and Robertson. I'm currently on Robertson. At, and I think it's mostly just because I want Robertson more than I want Diaz. Like, if I'm completely honest, if I had to pick one to go with for the rest of the season, I would pick Robertson. If I could pick one in a straight 1v1 battle, I would pick Robertson. I genuinely think Robertson in the opening game weeks is going to outscore Diaz. I really just do think that. The only reason I would go for Diaz is because of maybe a, a structural reason. If I wanted to change my squad structure, going for, uh, going for Luis Diaz does make that a lot easier. But I think I've managed to figure out a team where I can have Robertson and have a good flexible squad structure, which... I'm kind of happy with at the moment. Um, we, we have got a theme of similar players to players before, though, guys, because we have now got Ruben Diaz. So, yeah, Diaz is in. It was Laporte before, but obviously Laporte has had some minor injury problems and not really uh, had an opportunity to play for Man City in the preseason yet. Not sure if Laporte is actually even going to make the start of the season. So even though if both Diaz and Laporte were fully fit, I probably would prefer Laporte. I just think the fact that Diaz is, you know, 100% available, ready to go, you know, super nailed on player. I think he's just, you know, I'm fine to go with him. Maybe we can cheese a, a, a headed goal or some kind of flick on assist or something in the opening game weeks. But if not, I will take the clean sheets all day. And that is certainly something that Diaz can offer, um, you know, particularly in some of these fixtures. You're thinking West Ham, maybe, but certainly Bournemouth, Newcastle, Crystal Palace, you could potentially get three clean sheets out of the opening four fixtures, which would be quite mad, wouldn't it? And we're going to finish off the defence with Kieran Trippier. Trips is, is here to stay, I, I think. I think he's here to stay. I certainly really like him for the opening two fixtures, Nottingham Forest and then Brighton. Uh, that game week three fixture against Man City does worry me a little bit, so maybe I can rotate him with someone on my bench because I do kind of want him back for that Wolves fixture. Alternatively, I could use the opening couple of game weeks to keep an eye on some of those other defenders, you know, as uh, 
Zinchenko, for example, is a player who is very high on my wish list. So maybe I could switch Trippier out to Zinchenko after the opening two fixtures. But certainly these opening two, Nottingham Forest at home, Brighton away, you'd expect clean sheets in both of those games from Newcastle, given the end of the season last season. These are exactly the kind of fixtures they would keep good clean sheets in. And Trippier with his set piece extraordinaire, like banging in a free kick against Nottingham Forest. You can see it. Like, you can really see it. And the crowd will go absolutely wild. And Trippier owners will rejoice. Absolutely amazing things we love to see. Uh, into midfield, we have got Salah. Again, another player who's just going absolutely nowhere. Like, he's, sta he's here to stay. Like, he he's just the best FPL asset in the world ever, probably. Uh, so he's not going anywhere despite his high price. Uh, next, we've got Bowen. So Bowen is still in my team. I'm kind of getting more and more okay with the idea of removing Bowen. But for now, I think I am going to stick with him. I can't guarantee I'll have him come the game week one deadline. But I, he is a player I'm quite keen on. I, I just like some of these fixtures. Like even the Man City fixture, I've said this before on this channel, but a few months ago when West Ham played against Man City, Bowen scored two goals. It's kind of the exact kind of fixture that suits him. Like that is, you know, like he's fine playing on the counter-attack, but Bowen is a pretty fixture-proof kind of player. After that, we've got Nottingham Forest, Brighton, Brighton at home, Aston Villa there as well. There are points available there and all things go through Bowen in the West Ham team. Like all goals and assists seem to have a Bowen involvement. So, you know, even at 8.5 million, He's just such a good bargain. And, you know, at that price, if it doesn't work out or if I change my mind, if I want to move him away, there are so many options at that 8 million price point that I can switch to. And even if I wanted to go for like a Raheem Sterling at 10 million, it's only going to cost me, well, if I've got 0 0.5 in the bank, I only need to find 1 million from somewhere else to get someone like Sterling in as well. So Bowen offers me actually quite a lot of flexibility. And out of the 8 million-ish uh, kind of midfielders, he is one of my favourite ones to go for, which might be a little bit controversial, but, uh, you know, I like to live life on the edge a little bit. It's just, it's, it's just what I do. It's just, I, I don't like, I don't like to make teams that are too templatey. I, I like to mix things up. That's the only way you can get to the top is if you mix things up. And that's exactly what we did last season. And, and we're going to do it again this season. Uh, next up, we've got Martinelli. This player is a, a player I'm not 100% convinced by because I'm not sure he's safe enough in terms of minutes. I'm fine with taking a risk on a player, but when it's a minutes risk, that kind of does worry me a little bit. Um, he is obviously, like, I mean, to me at least, the best 6 million midfielder available. But still, if there is a bit of rotation, if he does struggle against Crystal Palace or Leicester, are we going to start panicking a little bit? But though I do like the, the two fixtures after that that Martinelli has against newly promoted teams in game week three, game week four. You know, these are good fixtures to have. And if he can nail himself on and continue his good form he's shown in the preseason, I just, I just kind of like... I kind of like him. I kind of like him, um, even if it means doubling up on the uh, uh, Arsenal attack, which is not something I'm totally convinced by. But as an individual player, 6 million, even 6.5 million midfielders. Like, I could switch Martinelli to Rashford, for example, but I think Martinelli could be a better pick, a better FPL pick than, than Rashford, even at 0.5 cheaper. So... Maybe he's the one to go for. And um, we're going to finish off the midfield with Neto. I'm, I'm back on the I'm, I'm back on the Neto hype train. I'm sorry, guys. I, I've fallen back into this. I don't know. What, I don't want to call this a template pick, but it's certainly like a Twitter template, a FPL YouTube template. Like people who are like love FPL love Neto. So yeah, he's back in my team. His preseason form has is just been absolutely phenomenal. I will never forget a couple of seasons ago when he was just on top of the world, like playing so well, looked like an absolute superstar. And coming in to the back end of last season, um, he looked pretty decent as well. He looked ready to go. And with a full preseason and these great opening fixtures, you know, Leeds, then Fulham, like these are really nice two opening fixtures. And you can imagine Neto being the guy to get something out of these games. Like if anyone's going to score, if anyone's going to assist for Wolves and we are when we pick FPL players, especially from those kind of mid to low table teams i'm not saying that uh, wolves are a low table team they're probably like a mid table team right but when we're picking from these teams we do want to pick focal points in those teams i think neto is exactly that and it's kind of rare that you can get a focal point from a team that is a mid table team for just 5.5 million it's obviously a great deal it's obviously a great bargain like obviously fpl priced them too cheap so maybe there's not really an argument to go here we are on neto no, Bailey is, Leon Bailey is gone temporarily at least. Um, and we have got Neto at the moment. But I should say on this one, guys, I have kind of been 
playing around with different drafts and Martinelli and Neto could swap to Jack Grealish and uh, and Leon Bailey. So that is another option I could go for. Obviously, that would use up the 0.5 in my bank, but that is another option I could go for. Or maybe I could just upgrade Martinelli to Rashford. But like I said, I'm not sure that I'm not completely convinced that is an upgrade. But there we go. Those are those are my midfielders. And then up front, we've still got Harry Kane. He's going nowhere. He like he's just having an insane preseason. Like. Like, people are constantly saying Haaland versus Kane, Kane versus Haaland. I've always very much been on Team Kane, and I'm not going to change my mind on that just because how well Kane finished last season. The fact he's had a full preseason this year, which is incredibly rare for Harry Kane, and how good Conte's team look going into the new season. This Southampton game, opening fixture... Everything seems to be lining up perfectly. And even though, like, you know, people saw Holland obviously scored in the, in the friendly game in preseason, everyone went absolutely crazy about Holland scoring one goal, completely ignoring the fact that, you know, on the same day, pretty much, Kane scored two goals. So, like, this is what I'm saying. Kane has just scored, like, a goal, at least, like, a goal per game during preseason and some assists. And, he, and, he, and that's even including giving uh, Son a penalty, um, which he wouldn't normally do in the Premier League. So... Kane is just, yeah, like, as an Arsenal fan, it pains me to say this, but, you know, he's just, he is an FPL GOAT, like, he actually is an FPL GOAT, and, um, like, he, he's going to smash it at the beginning of the season, I have no doubts about that. Uh, finish off in, finishing off the attack, let's put Gabby Jesus in, just because Jesus... We need to come. We need to come back to our. We, we've been gassing up Spurs too much. Let's let's put some Arsenal back in. Uh, no, of course, uh, Jesus looks so good in preseason. He's absolutely dominating it every single game. He it, uh, like we spoke about focal points. It looks like Arsenal have found their new focal point in this team. You know, he can pass, he can dribble, he can shoot. He's looking to shoot. He's looking to be the star. He looks confident coming into this new season, and he looks like he's found a home and he can become that player that everyone thought he would be at Manchester City. Now he can finally thrive, get regular minutes. You know, we know he's going to be super nailed on. And a few people are even saying that Jesus could potentially be on penalties as well. I'm not 100% sure about that, to be honest, but it's very possible, I guess. And at 62, well, over 62% ownership, everyone is picking Jesus. He is kind of too risky to ignore. If you also acknowledge the fact that he obviously is a good FPL asset, I think he is too good to ignore. Like, I feel like the only people who would not pick Jesus are people who are like intentionally trying to go against the crowd to try and make a bit of a difference there. But um, I, I'm I'm not I don't dislike Jesus enough to go against him. Like ordinarily, I just kind of ignore effective ownership unless it's extreme. But even if it is extreme, I would only go along with the crowd if a player is a player that I genuinely believe is really good as well. But typically, like, yes, that is a pretty template pick. But if you look through the rest of my team, you know, you've got Rea there, Robertson, Diaz, Trippier, uh, Bowen, Martinelli. These players are all kind of in the low 10s ownership. Bowen actually below 10% ownership. Uh, Kane is going to be a differential on Haaland. Uh, Neto is technically under 20% owned so that's still pretty differential and uh, I think overall this is still quite a spicy team which is exactly what I like to do is exactly how I like to play FPL T like kind of sensible picks that are also spicy that I have a lot of confidence in that are backed up by stats as well and are backed up by like good gut feeling from from watching games and eye test and also you know pre-season form and stuff like that and, and knowing how that team is going to fit that that player is going to fit into their own respective team so yeah, it's, a, it's to me this is a this is a really good team and it's exactly what I kind of like to do. This this team suits me a lot, which is which is perfect. That's what everyone should do when they're playing FBL. Find that team that suits them. Onto the bench, guys. We've got Olsen. Um, potential to get some game time. He's done quite well in preseason. And uh, Martinez. I don't know. Can Martinez be displaced at Aston Villa? Potentially, if anyone's going to do it, it's going to be Olsen. Uh, Nico Williams, obviously, by far the best 4 million defender. Andreas Pereira, by far the best 4.5 million midfielder. And Plange, for his fantastic name, the fact that he scored a hat-trick in pre-season a couple of, uh, well, a week ago or so. Maybe a little bit more than a week ago. And he also, also he's also got some uh, more starts from, from Crystal Palace in pre-season. I'm not saying he's going to start. Um, honestly, if I could choose any... 4.5 million forward. I probably would actually prefer to go for Archer. I think Archer's probably got the slightly better chance of some game time, but I, I don't really want to have two Aston Villa players on my bench because then it's going to make it kind of difficult for me if I want to bring in some more Aston Villa players. I'll already have two. Could limit me. Could potentially do some damage. And obviously players like Greenwood or Lyle Taylor, you know, maybe they get the odd point, but 
as soon as people start transferring those players out, uh, they're all already at such high ownership. They Those players are primed and ready to drop down to 4.4 million price. And uh, I don't really want to be losing team value at the beginning of the season, particularly when we're talking about early wild cards and things like that. So there we go, guys. That is my team. 0.5 million in the bank. We're going to slap the captain's armband on Salah. We're going to put the vice captain on Kane. A little bit tempted to go for Kane, the captain in the opening fixture, but I think we're going to stick with Salah. Uh, I think that's a safe thing to do, isn't it, really? And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's, uh, to, to me, that is a beautiful, beautiful FPL team. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you did enjoy this video, please leave a like. Just just, just click. Just it's it, it really does help push my content out to uh, more viewers, and, and that's going to be really helpful when we're trying to hit 150,000 subscribers by game week one it's probably not going to happen but like like i said 50 percent of people watching this video and this video will probably get i don't know like quite a lot of views if 50 percent of people who are not subscribed subscribed right now i would get to I'd get to 150 thousand subscribers in a day i mean that's not going to happen but i'm just saying i'm just saying uh but yeah guys thank you so much for watching plenty more uh, fpl content to come we've got more tier lists on the way, we've got Mrs. FPL mate is going to come back on the channel because you guys like her apparently. Uh, but that's it from me today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later, mate. Bye-bye.